so hello students uh, this is the lecture for uh, second year automobile uh, engineering students and uh, the subject uh, is automotive chases uh, coded by at8402 and the topics uh, or the units we are going to see uh, here the pending remaining topics uh, we have left in the classroom itself uh, due to the uh, due to uh, the model exam scenario we have to rush up uh, in order to uh, equip ourselves uh, to attend all the five units uh, we had already planned uh, to cover uh, partial uh, portions in both the units so unit 4 and unit 5 so in this lecture we are going to cover the uh, left syllabus hello so the unit 4 uh, suspension system and unit 5 in the brake system. Um, so, directly, let me uh, without further uh, uh, introduction, we will uh, go to the topics. So, these are all the topics we are uh, going to see today. So, from unit 4, we have uh, left the topics so, shock absorber, leaf spring suspension, and coil spring suspension. In unit 5, so the only uh, thing we have to see is retarders. So, first uh, we will see the unit 5 and later we will uh, go to the fifth unit. So, uh, the shock absorber. So, we have seen uh, a lot of introduction about uh, the suspension system, type of suspension system uh, in the classroom itself. So, it is like a recap. Uh, so, what is mean by suspension system and what is the significance and need for suspension system in automobile? A suspension system to prevent a vehicle uh, from road shocks, so uneven uh, motion of the vehicle due to the uh, uh, roughness of the uh, road surface and uh, shock uh, due to uh, vibrations and a uh, uh, lot of unnecessary forces acting on the vehicle so that uh, suspension system will damp such uh, shocks and uh, vibrations uh, which will uh, ensure a smooth uh, ride among the riders so this is the major purpose or significance of uh, uh, um, installing such a suspension system in an automobile so here uh, today we are going to see about the shock absorber. So uh, we have a myth uh, since a long year, since long years. So we are considering the shock absorber as a um, uh, as a different name uh, or a different. Uh, um, it's a, uh, we, are, we are just considering the shock absorber as an alter of the suspension system, but that's completely wrong. Shock absorber is just a part of a suspension system. This is not a standalone suspension system. So a shock absorber will assist or is a part of a uh, original suspension system. So what is the significance? What is the use of the shock absorber? So it will provide more resistance to the motion of the spring. Uh, let me assume uh, a vehicle without this uh, shock absorber so only uh, any kind of spring, either that may be a leaf spring or a helical spring, uh, will provide a suspension system for that automobile. So let me assume uh, a suspension system without the shock absorber. Uh, let us assume a, a coil spring itself. So once uh, a vehicle uh, would approach uh, a, a hurdle or a, a uneven surface, uh, the weight, uh, the self weight, and the passenger weight, cargo weight, so uh, vertical load, and uh, these uh, weight uh, in the vehicle uh, will lead to the um, uh, uh, springing motion uh, due to the uh, implementation of the uh, spring alone suspension system in the vehicle. It will tend to vibrate up and down uh, continuously for. Uh, Two to three seconds uh, it will uh, last up to two to three seconds without implementation of the shock absorber let us assume if we uh, add this shock absorber to the 
spring this shock absorber will damp the continuous vibration of the uh, spring motion so that is the major purpose of using this shock absorber in a suspension system so the, this is the purpose uh, i had uh, uh, told just now so to control the vibration on the spring so a spring alone suspension system could not uh, give a proper suspension or a proper comfort to the riders so we have to uh, import this suspension uh, shock absorber to the suspension system either that may be a spring or a, a, it may be a leaf spring or a helical spring so, so that it will provide a comfortable ride to the uh, passengers inside the vehicle and the major thing is uh, it have uh, it should resist the unnecessary motion of the spring so uh, a spring uh, we will know so what is the characteristics of the spring if we provide a load or a, if we give a load over the spring and uh, the moment uh, we release the load the spring will tends to oscillate so that is the basic characteristics so without uh, the shock absorber uh, the spring alone suspension system um, will make the vehicle to oscillate up and down so which will produce an uncomfortable uh, uh, feel to the customer uh, uh, sorry passengers inside the vehicle so this is the major significance or major purpose of uh, uh, introducing shock absorber into a spring system so this is the typical diagram uh, which shows the uh, shock absorber cross section so what type of uh, shock absorber we, uh, here we are going to see is a twin tube shock absorber so um, the major uh, shock absorber uh, we are using uh, nowadays is a telescopic uh, shock absorber system here uh, we will uh, see about a twin tube shock absorber system so the name itself uh, suggests that this shock absorber uh, shock absorber consists of a uh, two tubes so the tube colored here is blue color is one and this green color is another one so here uh, the picture depicts the two motions so one is compression cycle so this is downward so once the load or a shock uh, is applied over here and this is the expansion so this is the second motion or extension cycle this is the compression cycle and this is the extension cycle so before getting into the working so let me see what all the components uh, involved in this uh, construction of the twin tube shock absorber so one is uh, uh, here uh, this is the upper mount so here this is the provision for fastening into the fastening of this uh, uh, shock absorber into the vehicle frame and here like uh, the same uh, upper mount here it is the lower mount and this is the provision uh, for the fastening of this uh, shock uh, absorber into the frame so this uh, this is uh, uh, looks uh, similar uh, like a, a piston and cylinder arrangement uh, only so this is a piston rod and this is a working oil working fluid with high density so density of the oil uh, which will be used in this shock absorber uh, should have high uh, density and viscosity and this is the cylinder so this is the reserve cylinder so here the oil uh, is in the reserved state or stored here so on this tube is the pressure tube so this region so this uh, region alone is the pressure region and this is the base valve so opening so this uh, hole is the base valve so to release the excess pressure so these are the major component uh, components constitute uh, the building construction of this uh, twin tube shock absorber so uh, here uh, we will see the working so once uh, the load or a shock is applied over the vehicle uh, what, what will happen uh, this upper tube only uh, is the um, is the moving uh, uh, part of the shock absorber, and the lower tube is the stationary part. So um, here, this is the valve one, and this is the valve two. 
So once the pressure is exerted on the top face of this uh, shock absorber, so the fluid uh, from the wall uh, two, just uh, slightly above the wall two, will uh, uh, enter uh, towards the holes of this wall one, and it will reach to the upper portion of the wall one. So already here, some oil is already stored over here, and this uh, excessive oil uh, will reach out the upper portion of the wall one. Here, the pressure will increase due to the uh, lower volume uh, to the piston. Uh, so this is the piston. So in this region, there will be an excessive pressure that will uh, revert back this uh, cylinder, this oil to the again wall two region. So this is the compression stroke and expansion stroke. The oil, the, uh, the pressure is uh, pressure exerted oil will revert back into the, the uh, into the wall uh, two. So which in turn cause uh, this uh, uh, the lowered uh, top tube. Uh, uh, tends to go uh, move upward. So this is the basic working of this uh, shock absorber. So, so only the uh, just it's like a pressure and cylinder arrangement, uh, arrangement as I said earlier. Uh, the pressurized fluid is the major uh, constituent of this uh, uh, working. Next. So here, advantages. So due to the large amount of energy dissipated, uh, as uh, this uh, shock absorber uh, uh, includes uh, the working of uh, pressurized fluid, uh, obviously there will be a uh, a large amount of energy dissipation. So uh, because of uh, we are using fluids, there will be a uh, reduction in high temperature friction. And here, there is no mating parts. There is no mechanical mating between the components. So there will be a less wear or obviously no wear. And here, the leakage is lost in case of this uh, shock absorber. Cost is very less when compared to the spring. So if we take a uh, spring alone, or a, a, that may be a helical spring or leaf spring, so the cost will be uh, less when we compare to the spring. So there will be a, no uh, no necessity to top up the uh, working fluid in the shock absorber. So these are all the major advantages involved in the shock absorber. Next, so leaf spring and coil spring. So characteristics, uh, typical uh, construction and uh, characteristics of leaf spring and coil spring. Here, uh, this is the major suspension system of an automobile so we had seen the shock absorber in the previous slides so for an effective suspension we have to club these two uh, a spring system or a, either a spring or coil system uh, with the shock absorber system here we are going to uh, see along the, the spring and the coil arrangement individually so first we will see the basic uh, layout basic structure construction of a leaf spring suspension system so uh, uh, you will be able to uh, see clearly uh, the, uh, this is the frame so this portion the frame of an automobile it's a, a cut section it's a half uh, it's a, uh, a downscaled image of the frame uh, subject to an automobile and here uh, we can see uh, the, uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, curvilinear uh, structured plates, uh, steel plates, uh, which is laminated one over another. So lamination in the sense, so uh, plates will be arranged one over another. So that uh, type of arrangement uh, is collectively called as the laminates. So these are uh, the single plates arranged over one uh, over another. So uh, leaf uh, with uh, uh, is possessing uh, another leaf on, on its top and another leaf and uh, so on. So uh, basically the construction will uh, consist of uh, four or five leaf uh, laminated over uh, each other. So this uh, laminated leaves uh, 
uh, will be uh, supported by the uh, this uh, u bolt so this bolt uh, you will see here and uh, this uh, bolt joint will uh, uh, will fix or uh, will keeps uh, this uh, plates without uh, any slippage or any dislocation and uh, you can see uh, this uh, plates or uh, this is called a straps uh, this is also uh, playing a vital role uh, in preventing the leaves to uh, uh, misplace or uh, to displace so this is the main portion of the uh, main leaf uh, um, or main spring of the leaf laminates so the this main uh, main leaf or main spring is connected to the other sub springs so the main spring is having two eyes this is one eye and this is another eye so these two eyes are connected to the frame in terms of shackle so here uh, uh, the shackle is the um, mobile part and here this eye is fixed over this frame so this is a this laminate uh, uh, of spring is called as a main uh, spring laminates and the same kind of arrangement we can see here in a smaller uh, uh, size so this laminate we call it uh, we call uh, as a helper spring so i will uh, let me tell uh, the uh, significance of uh, um, fixing this helper uh, spring over here so i will tell tell it out so um, before uh, going to see the use of helper spring so let me see how uh, leaf spring will work so once uh, a vehicle will approach an uneven surface um, the vehicle will tend to um, uh, climb this uneven surface and uh, climb up over the the surface in this uh, 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 situation the load will act from this portion from this uh, side of the vehicle so here from this in this region uh, the leaf spring the spring of the vehicle will experience a vibration or shock so in order to reduce the shock the uh, the leaf uh, primarily uh, initial without any uh, and under free condition the, the leaf will see like this uh, um, like this uh, curvilinear uh, uh, curved uh, uh, orientation whenever it will uh, the vehicle approaches an uneven uh, uh, road surface the force uh, uh, the the shocks and uh, the load acting on the vehicle uh, will tend the leaf to uh, stretch in a straight uh, path so that uh, that is the um, uh, energy absorption capacity of this uh, leaf spring so this uh, curved path will tend to move towards the like i will draw here so this is the curved path once uh, the force the shock is uh, occurring here uh, this curved spring will tend to stretch into the straight path so this is the, the in this gap so from uh, the conversion of the shape uh, this uh, curved shape into this uh, straight path so in this region the um, actor energy will be absorbed by this uh, laminated springs so uh, this is how a, a spring will absorb the energy shock uh, from the uneven surfaces or a load of the vehicle and once the load uh, is released this uh, the stretched uh, leaf will uh, comes to its original position so that's uh, how the energy will be released so this is the basic fundamental working of the leaf spring so um, uh, you, you may have a guess now so what is the working of this uh, helper spring here so the reason behind here is if the vehicle uh, will approach uh, an over um, uh, shock or over uh, uh, which means a load uh, which should be um, uh, higher than the capacity of the energy uh, energy bearing capacity of this uh, mains uh, main laminates this helper spring 
will uh, act as a supporting spring in the uh, current uh, in the scenario so once uh, the cap uh, once the uh, load bearing capacity of this uh, main laminates uh, uh, will be crossed by the load this helper spring will help the uh, uh, will will absorb the excess load uh, will absorb the excess load from this main laminates and this uh, that's the major reason why these helper springs are attached in this frame so this is how a leaf spring will work uh, in the uh, automobiles uh, so basically uh, we can see these kind of leaf springs in the heavy vehicles alone uh, in light motor vehicles like cars or in two wheelers um uh, we did uh, we couldn't see this kind of uh, springs so these kind of these springs uh, we can see obviously in uh, heavy vehicles so in heavy vehicle uh, heavy vehicles only uh, the shock and the load uh, uh, would act more uh, when compared to the light motor vehicles so this is uh, another uh, arrangement of uh, leaf spring and uh, this uh, this leaf spring is uh, uh, called as a transverse type so you can see the orientation of the spring so in the previous case we can see the spring in this orientation in this curved orientation but here we can see uh, the spring in the transverse orientation so that's why the these kind of uh, leaf laminates are called as transverse leaf spring uh, setup so uh, here on this region this is the portion this is the one end of the axle so front axle or rear axle so this is the uh, stub axle so in the stub axle only we have to we will mount the wheel so the stub axle is obviously connected to the stub axle carrier so on this carrier uh, the end of the carrier is attached with the king pin so the king pin is attached to the this uh, cross section hub so this hub will uh, in turn attach it to the axle end so this is the axle end actually uh, the axle end is designed uh, in uh, with this laminated transfer uh, leaf spring so here uh, the uh, the load will act in this direction and uh, the leaf spring will tend to oscillate like this so the uh, when comparing to the previous uh, cases so the spring uh, originally in this uh, curved uh, uh, orientation once uh, the load approaches the vehicle so the curved leaf will uh, uh, stretch itself to absorb the energy like from the curved part to the uh, curved orientation to the straight orientation but here uh the, the leaf spring already is in the transverse direction transverse manner so once and the load uh, either it may be uh, act will act from this uh, uh, from top of the spring or from the bottom uh, part of the spring this uh, um, uh, spring will tends to oscillate uh, in order to absorb the energy and release the uh, absorbed energy and it will come back to the original position so this is the uh, construction of the uh, transfer uh, and uh, also it's a type of a um, leaf spring laminates and now uh, we'll see the coil spring so coil so you may know uh, what would be the arrangement of a coil so it's a helical grooved uh, wire surfaces which will be uh, wounded together to form this kind of a uh, uh, zigzag orientation uh, will constitute the construction of a coil so a coil spring will have n number of uh, turns as per uh, uh, the uh, the vehicle's requirement or uh, the vehicle's uh, uh, tendency to uh, observe the load the coil should be designed so the top face and bottom face of the coil is uh, constrained so here uh, we can upload a load or uh, from this region a coil uh, spring will exert a load 
so uh, obviously we will uh, know the working of this coil spring once uh, let me assume uh, the load uh, will acting from this direction top direction the, the, the coils will absorb all the energy so and uh, the, the, these uh, these uh, wounds uh, these turns of uh, wire will uh, compressed to this uh, to, to a maximum extent um, uh, of of the acted load. Uh, that's uh, that's how uh, a coil spring will absorb the energy. Once the energy act, uh, uh, given energy is released, this coil will comes to its original position. So this is how a coil spring will uh, absorb and release the load or shock in the vehicle. So uh, usually uh, we can see this type of uh, a coil spring uh, suspension system in two wheelers. Uh, um, majority of two wheelers uh, uh, will be equipped with this coil spring, but at center uh, the coil spring is assisted with a shock absorber. So that is the uh, better assembly uh, of suspension system. So uh, at time. Uh, a, a, a comfort ride of a passenger. So here too, uh, the intermediate uh, wounds of the wire is called as helper spring, uh, as like we had seen in the uh, previous uh, leaf spring itself. And this uh, uh, somewhat uh, looking uh, bigger in size, uh, this uh, laminate is called as the inch spring. So what are the advantages of uh, using coil spring over leaf spring? So here the major two advantages are the energy absorption rate is higher when compared to the leaf spring. So here in case uh, in case of a leaf spring, so we had seen already. So a leaf spring is a cumulative arrangement of a laminates of steel sheets or steel leaves. So there will be a, a contact between two leaf surfaces. But in case of a coil spring, there is no contact interleaf uh, friction. So in case of a leaf spring, there will be a friction between uh, two plates. So that will lead to a wear of that uh, suspension system. Here, there will be a minimum contact area. So contact points uh, is lesser in number in case, uh, when compared to the leaf spring. So here, there will be less wear. So these are the major two advantages when we compare this coil spring with the leaf spring. And this is the last topic uh, of the um, uh, left syllabus in the unit 5, retarders. So retarders, uh, this will come under the topic called uh, breaking. So uh, we'll already, uh, we have seen already about the uh, concept of taking uh, what are the different uh, 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 types of brakes uh, employed in an automobile. So we had seen the basic introduction part, uh, parts like uh, uh, braking effort, braking efficiency, uh, 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 stopping vehicle, stopping distance. So uh, there's some, some fundamental uh, topics about braking we had seen in the coaching class itself. So in uh, while uh, uh, seeing uh, these uh, topics, we had left uh, this uh, single topic alone, retarders in the unit five. And, and that topic we will see now and we, uh, we will finish the uh, entire uh, syllabus with this topic. So a retarder. So a retarder actually it's a device usually used in heavy vehicles like trucks, uh, pickup trucks, uh, lorries, uh, buses, uh, heavy omnibuses. So a retarder actually it's like a uh, it's, uh, construction. It looks like a uh, fluid coupling. Uh, we had seen in the uh, transmission topic. So it's a fluid uh, coupling. Uh, uh, this retarder uh, is possessing a structure which is uh, entirely uh, similar to that of a fluid coupling st uh, structure. So, what is the basic uh, significance? What is the basic purpose uh, of uh, implementing this retarder? Actually, retarders serve to slow down the vehicle. So, in, in order to 
in order to maintain a steady speed uh, while traveling down a hill. So let us uh, assume uh, it's a it's a steep path like this, and a vehicle, uh, a heavy vehicle, uh, is uh, rolling uh, down uh, from the steep uh, hill. Uh, let us assume obviously the um, we have to control the vehicle um, uh, very carefully uh, because uh, uh, in this kind of situation uh, the entire load of the vehicle will act downwards and the vehicle is moving uh, towards that direction only so uh, there might be a, a possibility of uh, uh, getting collision with the uh, uh, approaching vehicle from the uh, 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 lower uh, portion of the hill. So in this uh, uh, scenario, we have to slow down this vehicle and uh, we can't able to uh, apply the brakes uh, continuously. So if we apply brake uh, continuously while, uh, 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 while climbing down uh, a hill uh, with the vehicle, uh, the brake pads will tend to deteriorate uh, which means the brake pads will lead to wear uh, due to the continuous friction uh, between the rim and the brake pad. So, in order to prevent this, we will uh, in, uh, uh, the, the vehicles are uh, uh, attached or uh, installed with this retarders. Actually, uh, they are not usually capable of bringing vehicles to standstill. So this is not like a retarders is not like a brakes, actual brake. Actual brake we will uh, uh, we'll get uh, uh, a moving vehicle into a standstill uh, vehicle. But retarders, is, it's, uh, it's, its major purpose is only slow down the vehicle. So that's the major uh, purpose of this retarders. And uh, uh, mostly used in case of uh, this uh, scenario. So while uh, climbing down a hill or um, uh, approaching towards a, a curved bend or a curved hacking bends of a, a hill roads. So in those scenarios, we will, uh, uh, the, 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 the usage of retarders is uh, most significant. So as the friction brake will be useless. So uh, this is the friction brake is nothing but a conventional brake. So that will be a, uh, lesser usage of the friction brake and uh, the life of the brake pad and the brake tube will last longer. So these are the major reasons uh, we, uh, the, uh, for uh, implementing these heat orders into the braking system of an automobile. So this is the uh, basic construction of the retarder. So here, so we can uh, bisect, we can uh, bifurcate uh, this uh, layout into two half. So this region is the energy region. So here is the uh, source, sorry, uh, not energy, the source of the automobile. So this is the engine. So this is the transmission. And this region is the uh, retarder region. So this uh, this is the, actually, this is the major uh, hot portion of the retarder. So it's like, uh, as I told earlier, uh, earlier this uh, retarder, um, uh, looks similar to that of a uh, fluid coupling, so which we can uh, 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 see uh, in the transmission of uh, automotive transmission uh, vehicles. So it will consist of two major uh, uh, components. One is stator, which is fixed to uh, which is a fixed uh, uh, object, uh, and it's a, a rotor. A rotor is connected to the drive shaft. So here. Now, this drive shaft is connected to the gear and gear in this gear is connected to the scale up gear so uh, this gear will uh, produce more torque uh, that's why it's called as a scale up gear so once uh, and uh, th these are the major uh, components and uh, let me see how this retarder will slow down the vehicle so once the engine will produce the necessary power to propel the vehicle so the energy will transfer from engine to the transmission yeah. gearbox from the gearbox it will uh, transfer to this gear so here uh, actually without uh, uh, the, 
uh, implementation of this uh, uh, retarder so there will be a direct connection between uh, the gearbox and the uh, drive shaft but here uh, we are going to implement this retarder so that's why uh, a set of gear is used to connect the retarder and the transmission so how it will work so this uh, uh, we had seen already about the working of fluid coupling in the transmission uh, uh, unit itself so here the the, the fluid uh, this uh, entire portion uh, consists of a working fluid so once uh, the rotor uh, will tend to uh, rotate as the gear rotates from the transmission so the fluid will uh, pushed towards the stator so the, the fluid which is in the rest condition will will be pushed towards the stator and the stator both stator and rotor will have the um, uh, contrast uh, uh, design of uh, impellers uh, fixed inside their surfaces so once the oil is pushed towards the stator the stator will uh, as the stator is a stationary part, the, four, uh, the, the, the oil is splashed against the stator will get revert back to the rotor again. So it's like uh, the oil first uh, will uh, push or uh, will splash against the stator in this direction. So here is the stator which is, uh, sorry, so which is in a stationary condition. So here there is a uh, veins, uh, propellers fixed to the stator surface. So once the splashed oil is uh, came in uh, contact with this uh, uh, mains, it will be uh, uh, sent back, it will be uh, uh, pushed back by the stator vein. So this will create the opposite rotation of this rotor. So this opposite rotation will rotate the uh, uh, the speed of gear in the anti-clockwise direction. So, which in turn uh, reduce the uh, motion of uh, redu reduce the torque transmission of the uh, transmission entire transmission system of the automobile. So, this is how a retardation uh, will reduce uh, the acceleration or the speed of the vehicle, but it will uh, not make the vehicle to stand still like a brakes. So, this is just an um, assistant. Uh, or it, it will just assist the uh, braking system of an automobile uh, in case of a heavy truck not a, no, uh, it's not in terms of uh, light motor vehicles or heavy track uh, oil uh, approaching towards a uh, curb burns or uh, hairpin burns uh, while climbing down a hill so with this uh, I hope uh, you will uh, get a clear uh, uh, view about the um, uh, left topics uh, in the classroom session and uh, we had completed the syllabus uh, with this uh, topic and if you have any queries or any doubts uh, feel free to contact me at any time and I will be available to clear your doubts so please go through this lecture uh, thoroughly and uh, side by side uh, go through your uh, textbooks and uh, the materials provided uh, to you uh, 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 the, uh, if you end up uh, uh, getting doubts uh, uh, while uh, seeing this uh, video lecture just contact me anytime so i will be available to clear your doubts so with this uh, i will leave this session uh, thank you all